the Bahawir Talan the Grasta, Tan Tirnalat, is Bana Hori Divanaiv, Agspana Third of Renisa. Shed the Bahawir Talan the Grasta, Tan Tirnalat, is Bana Hori Divanaiv, Agspana Third of Renisa. Shed the Bahawir Talan the Grasta, Tan Tirnalat, is Bana Hori Divanaiv, Agspana Third of Renisa. Shed the Bahawir Talan the Grasta, Tan Tirnalat, is Bana Hori Divanaiv, Agspana Third of Renisa. Shed the Bahawir Talan the Grasta, Tan Tirnalat, is Bana Hori Divanaiv, Agspana Third of Renisa. Shed the Bahawir Talan the Grasta, Tan Tirnalat, is Bana Hori Divanaiv, Agspana Third of Renisa. Shed the Bahawir Talan the Grasta, Tan Tirnalat, is Bana Hori Vidanaiv, Agspana Third of Renisa. Shed Vahawir Talan the Grass to Tan Tirnalat, is Banahori Vanaiv, Oxbana Third of Renisa. Shed Vahawir Talan the Grass to Tan Tirnalat, is Banahori Vanaiv, Oxbana Third of Renisa. Glor Donahar Agustan Vak, Agustan Spirit Nave, Marabia Goose, Maratanish, Agus Marabia Scobrog, Nesaya Nesalaman, now Nahar Agustan Vik, Agustan Spirit Nave, Amen. Thanks, Nola. Uh, the next person now to speak is uh, if you're giving two poems, uh, Marion Quinlan Corton. She's here behind me, I think. I want to raise it for you a moment. Hi, everyone. Um, I was in Dublin in the middle of March and I was walking down O'Connell Street and I wrote this poem. On that Easter morning so long ago, with hearts and minds, each person took a stand to free our island. The flag flew high on the GPO Saxon Street, Dublin, as each person rallied to fight the foe and the outcome they did not know. Each person stood with weapons drawn. Our proclamation read by Padraig Pierce with pride for all the people of our island. Pierce and Condley and many more took that stand to change our island with their bravery now known 103 years later. Last week as I walked on O'Connell Street, the bullet holes I can still see on the GPO and on this day we are free to use our minds <coughs> and use our vote. As I walk many times around Glasnevin Cemetery and many more cemeteries around our island, I remember all who died from all sides, children, mothers, husbands, wives, sisters, brothers. I look around and read their names. I bow my head in respect for all. They fought for what they believed. Now in the history books on many shelves around our island, telling of their bravery to make us free as an Irish nation. They are asleep now. They give us freedom and cause many tears. As I stand today to pay respect and show them honour, for they give us our freedom for our tomorrow. So today, as I stand here, I will say a prayer and silently shed a tear. In 2005, some young people asked me, is there a way of putting a modern take on 1916? <coughs> so I went off and I thought about it and I went to Kilmainham Jail and I did a bit of history searching and this is what I came up with and it was written on the 23rd of May, 2008. It's called Island Today. As I lay my head on my pillow with a big eider down at my feet, lying there cosy and warm, hoping to sleep until morning. And as I lay there in slumber, a dream appeared in my head. I was somewhere in Dublin. I was outside Kilmainham Jail instead. I turned to the person beside me. He had a newspaper in his hand. 
I glanced at the date on the paper. It was dated May the 12th, 1916. The headline on the paper gave the names of the men executed for Ireland. The names were as followed. P.H. Pierce, Thomas MacDonald, Thomas J. Clark, May the 3rd, 1916. Willie Pierce, Joseph Plunkett, Edward Daly and Michael Hanrahan, May the 4th, 1916. John McBride, May the 5th, 1916. Cornelius <laughs> Corbett, Eamon Kent, Michael Mallon and Sean Houston, May the 8th, 1916. Thomas Kent, May the 9th, 1916. James Conley and Sean McDermott, May the 12th, 1916. Is the beauty in dying or is the victory in debt? Then I saw a boy on the corner reading a sheet in his hand and the first two lines of his glancing were familiar in my mind. It read Irish men and Irish women in the name of God and of her dead generations. In my unconscious mind, it was the words of our proclamation. I awoke and then I thought I was not born. I did not live back in 1916, but those brave women and men gave me my freedom of speech, my right to say what I want for my island today. Thanks, Marion. Now we we'll have the proclamation read by Dennis Hartness. Public Mayhem, the provisional government of the Republic of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she received her old traditional nationhood, Ireland through its summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood to her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and to our open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, and she now sees that moment, and supported by our exiled children in America, and by gallant allies in Europe, who's lying in the first on her own strength, and strikes, she strikes with full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland, and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies, to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished, except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right, and again asserting it in arms, in the face of the world. We hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state, and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to, and hereby claims, the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights, and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences, carefully fettered, fostered by an alien government who have divided the minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought this, the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland, and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the military, civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In the supreme hour the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by its readiness of its children, sacrifice themselves for the common good, 
prove itself worthy of the august destiny which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Parisian government, Thomas J. Clark, John McDiarmid, Thomas McDonough, P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kent, and Joseph Bunch, James Conway. Chairman, 